Nobody had the guts to go face this guy. Look down at, at uh, 1 Samuel 17, 28. The Bible reads, And Eliab, his el eldest brother, heard when he spake unto the men. And Eliab's anger was kindled against David, and he said, Why camest thou down hither? And with whom hast thou left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know thy pride and the naughtiness of thine heart, for thou art come down that thou mightest see the battle. And David said, What have I now done? Is there not a cause? And he turned from him toward another and spake after the same manner. And the people answered him again after the former manner. And when the words were heard which David spake, they rehearsed them before Saul, and he sent for him. And David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with the Philistine. What a sin it is. What an ungodly thing it is when people can watch somebody mock God, mock our country, mock everything we believe, and nobody wants to do anything about it. And it's sinful to do nothing. And David said, I don't want to be a nothing. I don't want to do nothing. He said, I'm going to do something about it. Why? He said, what have I now done? Is there not a cause? You see, these men here, they were all about what the intentions were, what the pride, naughtiness of your heart. He said, no, don't talk to me about my heart. Don't talk to me about my pride, seemingly, or my humility, or, or lack thereof. He said, is there not a cause? What have I now done? What have you done? What have any of us done? We're doing nothing. He said, is there not a cause for us to do something here? Now, let me tell you something. This morning, there is a cause to go out and do something. Let me give you, let me give you some, some reasons why. I just, I just briefly just wrote down just seven things. Seven things that we ought to be doing. Seven things that, that are my purpose in my ministry. Seven things that as Christians we ought to make the goal of our life. Number one, winning souls to Jesus Christ. Pulling them out of the fire. Hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. Hey, getting people saved yeah. is what we all ought to be doing. Right. Number two, we should be banding together as one unified body in God's institution, God's congregation, the local church. Hey, that's worth doing. It's what Jesus spilled his blood on the cross for uh, to purchase the local church. Hey, it's worth being a part of. Number three, training, confirming, and leading those who we win to Christ and other baby Christians that we come across in our life. When we find a baby uh, laying abandoned because they've never been taught the Bible, they've never been taught soul winning, we find a baby left in the field as Ezekiel did in Ezekiel 16, we pick it up and we uh, nurture it and bring it up as our own spiritual child. Hey, training, confirming, and leading those who we win to Christ and other baby Christians to greater service for God. Training them to win souls. Uh, making something out of their life that, that's worth something for the kingdom of God. Number four. Purging our heart, this, this is what I'm about. This is what I'm going to do. I don't know what you're going to do. Oh, let me tell you what I think. I don't care what you think. Let me tell you what I feel. I don't care what you feel. Let me tell you what my plans are. I don't care what your plans are. This is what I'm going to do today, tomorrow, yesterday. Okay, and that's what God is saying here. Don't say today or tomorrow, we shall live and do this or that. You don't know what you're going to do tomorrow. Don't boast about tomorrow. Thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. He says, you better do so. If you don't do it now, it's a sin. Do nothing now, you're in sin now. Don't tell me what you're going to do tomorrow or what your plans are. Number four, purging our hearts, minds, and bodies from the filth of our mainstream society, which God has given the despicable title of the world. I mean, so much is summed up in those two words. The world. I mean, to me, it brings up images of TV screens. To me, it brings up images of magazine covers. To me, it brings up images of people who love themselves. Lovers of themselves more than lovers of God. Despisers of those that are good. Traitors, the Bible says they are. Heady, high-minded. They're traitors. They're, they're, they're despicable. They're ungodly. At the world, I'm going to purge myself from all filthiness of the body and of the spirit. Uh, per 2 Corinthians 7, verse 1. Number five. This is what else I'm going to do. Read, study, and meditate, and pour over every word of the Bible daily. We ought to be all pouring over, reading, studying the Bible daily, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge, underscore that word, knowledge of the Son of God. That's worth doing. Number six. To teach our families and our children. To bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. To love God. To love God's people. To know God and walk with God. Not to be a hypocrite in the home. Not to have my kids see one dad in the home and another dad behind the pulpit. But to see the same man 
on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday to learn that Christianity is not a joke. It's not a show. It's not an act. It's for real. It's part of our lives. That's what I'm going to do. That's what you ought to do. Hey, that's what we ought to be doing. Number seven. To fight against, yes, fight. To fight against the murderers, tyrants, pornographers, perverts, and devils who've taken over our media, they've taken over our politics, and they've taken over our pulpits in America. Right. We ought to fight them. Amen. That's what I'm going to do. There's seven things that I, you say, is there not a cause? Yes, there's a cause. I just listed you seven things to devote your life to. Seven things. You say, well, I don't know where I'm going. Like, I don't have any direction. Hey, get all of these seven things. Do these seven things in your life and walk into the pearly gates and say, I finished the work that thou gavest me to do. Praise the Lord. That's the truth. Number one, win souls. Number two, church. Number three, training. Confirmation. Remember, I preached on confirmation, confirming believers that you've that you want the Lord. Uh, number four, purging from the filthiness of the world. Number five, reading, studying the Bible. Number six, training and teaching your family and your children. Number seven, the fight that needs to be fought. Yes, there's a fight that needs to be fought. These are the seven things I'm going to devote myself to. You see, flip over, if you would, to Revelation chapter 20, verse 12. Revelation 20, verse 12. Now, this is not a verse that's, that's dealing with believers. It's dealing with unbelievers. It's talking about the dead being judged. But just let me show you something about God that's a very universal principle about God. And you'll find it all throughout the Bible. And I'll give you some verses that deal with believers also. Here's first a verse about unbelievers. Just to show you something about the character of God. The Bible says in Revelation 20, 12, And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their intentions. Is that what it says? And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their plans, according to their motives. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their temperament, according to their personality. They were judged according to their works. See, God judges people by their works. Did you know that? You say, well, that's talking about unbelievers. And it says, of course, in the next verse, and the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. Well, here's a verse in regard to believers. Be not deceived. He says, let no man deceive you by any means. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. How is God righteous? How is, how is Jesus righteous? Because the Bible says, praise the Lord for all his righteous acts. <laughs> you remember that verse in the book of Psalm? Praise the Lord for his wonderful works toward the children of men. And every man that doeth righteousness is righteous even as he is right. Why is God right? Because of what he does. Huh? His marvelous works. His works toward the children of men. His mighty acts. They evidence. They are the, the measurement of his holiness and greatness. His actions. What's the measurement of your greatness, your righteousness, your holiness, your actions? Not what you say. Not what you think. Not what you feel, not what you plan, what you do. You see, we're going to be brought into judgment and at the judgment seat of Christ, not for sins. Our, our sins have been forgotten. Gone, gone, gone. Yes, my sins are gone. As far as the east is from the west, so has God separated us from our sins. The Bible says his sins shall not be mentioned unto him. Hebrews 10, 17, their sins and iniquities will I remember no more, God said. But he will judge our works at the judgment seat of Christ and he's going to judge them Good or bad? Was your work excellent or poor quality? And he says, if it's poor, it's gone. It's told. It's uh, wood, hay, and stubble. No reward. He said, he said, you will lose a reward, but you yourself will be saved. And so, I, when I'm brought into judgment before God, He's gonna be. He's gonna look at my works. Turn there. You, you don't believe me? Turn there. Second Corinthians. Well, you believe me, but turn there so that you can believe the Bible. Second Corinthians chapter five. You've probably seen this verse before, but I like to emphasize certain things. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done. You see that word, done? Here's an English lesson. It comes from a root word. See the first two letters? Do. You do what you've done. He says, it will be judged, receive the things done in his body. You're only going to receive a reward for what you've done.